I have a lot of computers, probably too many for one person. But when it comes to productivity, there's still only one that I reach for from this pile. Starting my day, I sit down, open my MacBook Air, and the laptop is instantly on. The Apple Watch unlocks my profile before I even see the password screen, and it immediately takes me to my desktop. I can put on my AirPods Max to quickly connect to audio or use the surprisingly good onboard speakers. This is the magic of the Apple ecosystem. I never have to press a single power button. I can begin writing, coding, or video editing without skipping a beat. You know, this machine still really surprises me. The previous generation of the MacBook Air could not have handled some of the software that I need to use on a daily basis. For me, it's kind of unthinkable that I could use, by definition, an Ultrabook for these heavier applications. The reality is, regardless of the laptop that you use, they're all capable of basic computing tasks. But there are a few things that set the MacBook Air apart from the rest. And it starts with the M1 chip. Now, you've probably already heard all the rave reviews about the new Apple Silicon processors by now. They are incredibly fast and efficient, and it's at the heart of what makes these new MacBooks, iPads, and iMacs so special. This one tightly integrated chip houses the CPU, GPU, RAM, and neural engine. The trade-off of the user upgradability provides huge performance gains with less power consumption. But there are some limitations. When working with multiple streams of 4K footage and layering effects, the whole system kind of comes to a crawl. So to finish the job, I need to switch over to the MacBook Pro 16. Some effects just benefit from the raw performance from the dedicated GPU and more RAM I have in the 16 inch. But it's impressive that I'm even referencing this use case with the MacBook Air. The fact that it can handle most basic 4K video editing by itself is already amazing. I will add that my unit does only have 8 gigs of unified memory. I believe a lot of these issues would have actually been resolved had I opted for the 16 gigs of unified memory uh, when purchasing. Nonetheless, if you're not interested in using heavier applications with this computer, it's not likely that you'll have any issues with the performance. And if you are, then I would probably recommend the MacBook Pro 13, which has even better performance thanks to its onboard cooling fans and I'd probably configure that with 16 gigs of onboard memory. Still, my graphic design and web development software works without a hitch. Visual Studio Code, Photoshop, Illustrator, Adobe XD, along with many others, all have native M1 support, and in many cases run faster than they did on Intel devices. The webcam quality is decent as well, but more importantly, the microphone is good, especially for a built-in. I will say though, every time I open up my MacBook Pro, I realize how much I miss that larger 16 inch display. As much as I like the portability of the Air, I would still take the larger screen size. Hopefully Apple delivers the rumored 14 inch and 16 inch MacBook Pros with Apple Silicon soon. However, the 16 by 10 aspect ratio is still my favorite for productivity and the retina resolution makes text and images look sharp. Overall, a fantastic screen. With the larger sizes, I am also hoping for more USB-C ports, as the two on the air feel incredibly limiting. Because I work with large files and internal storage upgrades are obscenely expensive, I have an SSD Velcroed and plugged into one of the ports, leaving me only one extra USB-C port. And although I don't have to worry about charging too often, when I do, I have none left for SD card readers or anything else. Yes, I have dongles. Even so, they're a pain to keep up with, and we just need more ports. Battery life is also incredible on this laptop. I will use around 35 to 40% for the entire day when working on productivity tasks like coding or writing or even browsing the web. It does drain faster when using heavier applications such as Final Cut. Even then, it will still last me most of the day and the power brick is very small and compact if I feel the need to carry it with me. Between this and the Asus G14, these are my favorite keyboards on any laptop that I have used. The spacing, key travel, and satisfying feedback make coding, writing, and general productivity an enjoyable experience. On the top right is the power button that also doubles as a Touch ID fingerprint reader. It's used to unlock the device, make payments through Apple Pay, and autofill passwords or addresses. It's very convenient to have. 
and Apple's trackpads are still the best on any laptop. Now, something the Asus G14 can do much better than the Air is of course gaming. Now, when it comes to Apple Arcade games, something simple, just to pass the time, the Air actually does really great. It runs Apple Arcade games at very playable frame rates and resolutions. Just don't expect to play long sessions of more demanding games on a MacBook Air. It's just not designed to do that. If gaming is a priority for you and you want a laptop that is light and portable, I would recommend checking out my Asus G14 review. I'll leave a link in the video description. Now, when it comes to these heavier applications, I am starting to reach the limits of the M1 in the fanless design. So I am really looking forward to the new 16 inch refresh in hopes that it will round out all of my needs. But for anyone who is not working with higher resolution video or similar intensive tasks, the MacBook Air is still an easy recommendation.